my name's Artemis. And I am Du. And there are so many expectations that we hold ourselves to in this furry fandom. What it should be, what it actually is, and how we should be acting. And they are all 100% totally fucking correct, honest. No, no, that's bullshit. That is absolute bullshit. But really? Bull yes. Oh, shit. It's always been! Do you, do you think the people know? I don't think they do. Do you think we need to do a video educating them on that and why these expectations are actually bad? That's why we're filming this intro. Oh my god! Let's see if that video actually got made! So, you want to be sexual in the fandom? That's awesome. Keep it behind a locked account. Don't let anyone see it and don't talk about it out in public. These are just things that the fandom kind of expects of you. They want you to be lewd. They want you to express your sexuality but they also don't want to see it. Personally, I don't think it's that big of a deal. It, we're all adults, we're allowed to be lewd. If you don't want to see it, you can keep scrolling. Twitter has an option, you could just take it off that you don't want to see this option. Personally, I think there's no problem with embracing your sexuality and embracing the things that make you you. It's one of the many ways you can connect to other people in the fandom who have the same interests, the same beliefs, and the same mindset of thinking. But when you try to t put people in a category and say, no, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't act this way, then what's the point in embracing it if you're not allowed to embrace it openly? It doesn't make sense, does it? One lovely expectation we like to place upon ourselves is that we're going to come into the fandom with a suit, with a character, with all of these wonderful things and go, I'm going to do TikTok, I'm going to do YouTube, I'm going to be the next big thing and I'm going to put so much hard work into it that it's all going to pay off. Everyone's going to see how much work I put into it because that's what matters. Bitch, you better sit the fuck down and shut up, little boy, because that's not how this fucking place operates, okay? People just lock themselves into this sort of thing, and that's the real nitty-gritty of it. You can expect to do well. You can expect to do so many great and wonderful things. You can tick all the boxes and follow the algorithm, and it may never be enough when one random person makes a shit post that fucking shoots them to the moon. It's just the nature of the beast. It is a coin flip and you can do everything right and still not get there. And you can do everything wrong and get there overnight. It's a hard expectation because a lot of us want this. And I'll be honest, uh, you might want to figure out why you actually want this in the first place because trying to chase what other people have got and what they're doing, mm -mm, like you, don't, you don't need to go off being a new version of someone else, just be the first version of you but it's a very hard expectation that a lot of us don't really measure up to, which is why I've said so many times, do it for the passion and do it because you enjoy it. Because if you do it for the numbers, you won't be doing it for very long. So you want to make it in this amazing fandom of ours? Well, that's great for you. I hope you're ready to put in the work. You're going to have to start networking. You have to say hi to everyone at Con. You have to give every person you meet a big hug. Remember everyone's name. Remember how you met them. Remember how you started talking to them. Remember their favorite color and their favorite kink. But, you have to do it within the realm of the fandom. You have to maintain this status quo of you have to be all bright and shiny. You have to be a people person. You have to get people to like you. And you're not to have, allowed to have opinions that other people might not agree with or else you're gonna get canceled galore and everyone isn't going to wanna be your friend anymore. Personally, I think you don't have to be a people person to be in the fandom. I know many people in this fandom who don't like getting hugged at cons. They don't like getting booped or stepped on. Those people, it's okay to be wrong. But it's not for everyone. It's not, I don't, personally, I don't like being booped at cons. If you see me at a con, say hi, give me a hug. That's great. Do not touch me. I don't like it. But not about me. Could be about me. It ain't. But you don't have to go out of your way to say hi, to greet everyone, to quote unquote, make it in this fandom. It isn't necessarily a make it or break it scenario. Just vibe. You wanna be a puppy? Go ahead and be puppy. There's a puppy right there. He is very, he is, he's asleep. We all expect that we are on the right side of the fence when it comes to various issues, various things that are going on in the fandom itself. We all expect that just generally being a good person is enough. And for the most part, it is, quite frankly. For the most part, that's all you really need to do. But mm, this is the internet. And if someone can get butt hurt over it, mm, by gosh, you know they're going to. So there's always going to be an expectation of being morally superior. That like all of us have to be fucking psychic, I guess, and spending our entire life online, making sure we're up to date with who's a pedophile this week and who's a zoophile and, you know, is this actual drama or did that person call that person a dick and now it's blown out of proportion? 
because how many times have we seen people like, mm, well, shit, I'm still seeing a lot of my mutuals follow this asshole. I'm like, yeah, because maybe that mutual has a life outside of Twitter.com. You don't know what's going on. There's an expectation that all of us are supposed to know everything about everyone that we're following and is following us. And that we're supposed to be some sort of moral police for all of this. And I honestly feel it's fucking toxic and bullshit. I mean, did we learn nothing from people being, you know, proven innocent after all of these allegations have destroyed their career? It's too easy for someone to walk up on Twitter and say, that person is a bad person. I think they fuck dogs. And people bandwagon the shit out of it. Like, and being all this fucking direction with this level of offense is just tiring in the first place as well because at the end of the day, you're getting upset at pixels on a screen. You don't know these people personally. You've not met them in the real world. You, you could walk past them in the street and not know it was them. So why are you devoting all of your energy towards it? It boggles my furry little mind. Oh, you got a bit of talent, you got a bit of personality, that means nothing. You know what you need? You need a fursuit. Oh, you can't get a fursuit? That's okay, get a VR model. Oh, you don't have a computer? That's okay, be good at porn. You're not good at porn? Oh, well, die, I guess. In this fandom, as much as I love it, we rely on the fact of this being ourselves. We rely on a character representing us instead of what our talents and who we are as people representing us. And I think that's something that really hurts a lot of people in this fandom because a lot of people think they can't make it in the fandom or no one's gonna pay attention to them in the fandom unless they have any of these things. And honestly, I kind of agree. A lot of times we prioritize the cute fursuiter with the boopable nose and blah, blah, blah over the guy who's really good at drawing art but doesn't have a OC that they present themselves as. And I just don't think that's right. Like at the end of the day, at a convention, all of this comes off if you're clean. Uh, go shower, take care of yourself, take care of others. At the end of the day, all of this is come all of this comes off and you're left with the person underneath. And I think that is more valuable and more important than the avatar character or the fursuit that they wear to mask themselves. And of course, the final point, there is this huge expectation that the furry fandom is this big organized thing with leaders and with people in power and authority. And it's this big, big thing that actually exists. And by and large, it doesn't. The way most of us treat the fandom, the way we act like it exists, the things that we believe about it are pretty fucking flimsy. It's all an illusion. It's not actually fucking real. It's, this is just a bunch of people stood around in roughly the same sort of area online, liking roughly the same set of things. It's, it does not mean that there is some central governing body. It does not mean that there is some criteria. Because I know people love being like, you're not a true furry unless you're doing this. You're not really a furry unless you're doing that. It's the same people who likes to play the whole, you're not a real furry unless you've got a fursuit. It's, it's that kind of bullshit. It's only really there for people to morally grandstand and basically say, I'm better than you, bitch. Uh, which is my job, but there is this very big expectation that there's a whole big thing There's this organization that just isn't there and essentially you're just gonna be with your group of friends and your group of followers doing your own thing and That's the best way that you can see this that is the healthiest way that you can engage with this fandom is by understanding exactly what it is Which is barely a thing of structure at all. It is like a taste you know, there are many things that taste like salt and vinegar or fucking pepper steak, but the actual taste itself is immaterial. It is a fucking sensation in our heads. So's the fandom. The fandom is salt and vinegar. Artemis 2024. I can't do quotes. Shut up. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it made some sort of sense. Obviously, we are not saying that this is 100% accurate because uh, it's all a matter of what you've seen of the fandom. Some people might not have noticed it. Some people might be snapping their fingers like they were at a drag race, like, yes, queen. But uh, obviously, we don't condone these expectations. They are bad. We don't like them, do we? No, and pointing out any of these little quirks that we noticed in the fandom doesn't mean we hate the fandom. It just means we love the fandom enough to notice these things happening and we just want to bring it to people's attention and make them more aware. Exactly. And plus, it's fucking clickbait. It's good shit. Like, I, I need to pay the fucking bill sometimes and, I mean, this only goes so far. So, 
Uh, but speaking of that, there's probably been a graphic flashing up somewhere about maybe you could support us on that. I'm sure you would love to see this all over this. And yeah, we're probably going to have to do that at some point. But thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, obviously go and support Duke. He has numerous ways to go and do that. So he has TikTok, he has Instagram, he has Twitter. He has a very cute face, I guess. Uh, I do. He knows I have it. everything that isn't MySpace. So just find me. He doesn't have threads. No one has threads. No one even remembers what that shit was. Actually. Do you, do you actually? <laughs> I do. Well, on that fucking bombshell, <laughs> I guess we're done. I'm Bye. Fine.